Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we started learning about the division procedures and in this session, we are going to learn the concept of restoring division. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will acquire the understanding of restoring division. Now in the previous session, when we learned about the division procedures, we observed that the division procedures can be grouped into two classes. The slow algorithms where the iterative operation is subtraction and the fast algorithms where the iterative operation is multiplication. Now in the course of COA, we are not going to learn about the fast algorithms. Anyway, we are going to observe some of the slow algorithms starting off with the restoring division procedure and the non-restoring division method. And in this session and in the upcoming session, we are going to learn about the restoring division. Now in this particular session, we are going to learn about the concept behind the restoring division. And in the next session, we will observe the implementation. Now since we are learning about the concept of the restoring division, that is the reason why we are going to learn it using our very familiar number system, decimal number system. So we have chosen a dividend which is denoted using D and for the dividend D, we have chosen the decimal number 4537. Now coming to the divisor, which is denoted by V, we have chosen the decimal value 3. So let's perform the division now. Now observe, the dividend is 4537 and the divisor is 3. Now if we take the quotient as 1, we will obtain 3 in here because 3 into 1 is 3. Now subtracting 3 from 4, we will obtain the value 1. Now whenever we perform the division, we know after we perform subtraction at one level, we are entitled to enable the next digit, in this case it is 5, so we can bring this 5 down to this. Now we have the value 15. Now since it is 15, we can have the quotient as 5 because 3 into 5 will give us 15. Now 15 minus 15 will obtain in 0. So we don't have any value in here. However, we can bring this 3 down. So let's bring that down. Now since it is 3, we can have the quotient as 1, which will give us 3 in here. Now 3 minus 3 will result in 0 once again. So although we don't have any value here, we can still bring this 7 down. So let's bring that down. Now since it is 7, we can have the quotient as 2, where 3 into 2 will give us 6. Now 7 minus 6 will yield 1. Therefore, the result of this division is the quotient Q, 1512, and the remainder R, that is 1. Now observe the division a bit more carefully. Observe, in this place, what is happening? This is actually an acceptable shorthand method. Here mathematically, this is happening, that is, from 4537, we are actually subtracting 3000. Now why so? If you observe the quotient that is 1512, this is actually 1000 plus 500 plus 10 plus 2. So this is not only 1, this is actually 1000. So if we multiply 3 with 1000, we are supposed to obtain 3000. And we are performing the subtraction 4537 minus 3000, which eventually will give us 1537. Now, this is the remainder and the partial remainder of this, that is 15, is being yielded in here. So, if we want to observe the actual steps for this division, the division would look something like this. So, basically, this is Q, that is the quotient. And this is V, that is the divisor, which is 3 in this case. Now coming to the quotient, it has 4 digits. Let's name them as follows, that is Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Now this subtrahend, that is 3000, it is actually generated, taking the V, that is the divisor, which is 3 in this case, multiplying V with Q3, that is the digit placed underneath Q3, which is 1 in this case, and with that, we should multiply the place value of Q3, which in this case is 10 cubed. Because observe carefully, the quotient Q is a four-digit decimal number, and we already know in case of decimal, the place value of Q0, that is this place, 
is going to be 10 raised to the power 0. The place value of q1 is 10 raised to the power 1. The place value of q2 is 10 squared. And finally, the place value of q3 is 10 cubed. And due to this, we are obtaining the subtrahend 3000 by multiplying the divisor that is v with q3, that is the digit placed underneath q3, which is 1 in this case, and multiplying with that the place value of q3, which is 10 cubed. Now, coming to the subtrahend 1500, we are obtaining this, taking the v, that is the divisor, and with v, we are going to multiply the digit placed underneath q2, which is 5 in this case. And also, we will multiply the place value of q2, which in this case is 10 squared. Basically, 3 into q2, that is 5 in this case. So, 3 into 5 will give us 15, and 15 into 10 squared, that is 100, will give us 1500. Now, coming to the next subtrahend, that is 30, we are obtaining this 30 from this, that is v, that is the divisor, multiplied with the digit in q1, that is 1 in this case. And the place value of that, that is 10 raised to the power 1. So basically, 3 into 1 into 10, so 30. Now coming to the final subtrahend, that is 6, we are obtaining this from this. Basically, the divisor v or 3 multiplied with the digit of q0, that is 2 in this case, and the place value of that, 10 raised to the power 0. So basically, 3 into 2 is giving us 6. So, observe the pattern. We are taking the dividend 4537 and from that we are subtracting this, which is nothing but 3 into 1 into 10 cube because the digit underneath Q3 is 1 and the result of this multiplication is 3000, which leads to the result of this subtraction that is 1537. Now, coming to the next iteration, we are going to take this intermediate remainder, that is 1537, and from this, we are going to subtract this, which is nothing but 3 into 5 into 10 squared, which basically is 1500. So, from this subtraction, we are going to get the result 0037 or 37. Now, for the next iteration, we are going to take this intermediate remainder, that is 37, and perform the subtraction of this which will give us 7 and finally, this subtraction will be performed which will give us the final remainder that is 1. Now, say we are naming the final remainder as R0 and say the preceding intermediate remainders are named like this R1, R2, R3. Now, if we name the remainders like this, following this pattern, we can provide a generalization like this. That is, the value of Ri can be obtained by subtracting Qi into V into 10 raised to the power i from Ri plus 1, where i is n minus 1, n minus 2, so on and so forth till 0. Let me explain this. Say we are trying to obtain R0. Now, R0 can be obtained if from R0 plus 1, that is R1, that is Ri plus 1 in this case, we subtract V into Q0 into 10 raised to the power 0. Now observe, we are trying to obtain R0, so the value of Qi is Q0 actually, and this place value, which is denoted as 10 raised to the power i, in this case, it is going to be 10 raised to the power 0. So, using this recursive formula, we can obtain the intermediate remainders. Now, observe the first iteration. Here, we guess the value of Q3 to be 1. Now, how did we guess it? We did it using manual trial and error method. Think about the situation. Say, we had chosen the value of Q3 to be 2. In that case, the result of this multiplication would have been 3 into 2, that is 6 multiplied with 10 cubed, that is 1000, which will eventually would have given us 6000. Now, this subtraction would have resulted in the value minus 1463. So, basically, if the value of Q3 is 2, we are going to obtain a negative intermediate remainder. And this is the reason why we chose the value of Q3 to be 1, not 2. Now, think from a machine's perspective. 
a machine would have to go through all these steps explicitly. Basically, it would have to keep on performing the subtraction until the intermediate remainder became negative, which means it was subtracted one time too many. And that is the reason it would have to be restored to the last positive intermediate remainder. Let me illustrate the procedure. Since we already know, we are taking the dividend as 4537 and the divisor in this case is 3 and we already know the quotient Q is going to be a 4 digit number so we are naming those digits as Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3 and we will also obtain a remainder. Let's initiate the procedure. We will take the dividend that is 4537. Now at first we are trying to determine the value of Q3. So from the dividend 4537, we are going to subtract 3 that is the divisor multiplied with 10 cubed which happens to be the place value of Q3. Now if we perform the subtraction once, we are going to obtain the value 1537. And with this, the value of Q3 will be initialized to 1 implying that the subtraction has been performed only once. Now coming to the next iteration, we are going to take this intermediate remainder that is 1537 and we will perform the subtraction once more that is 3 into 10 cubed that is 3000. Now the subtraction of these two will give us the result minus 1463 setting the value of Q3 as 2 which implies that this subtraction has been performed twice. Now observe, this is a negative intermediate remainder and we need to restore it back. So what we will do? We will take this remainder that is minus 1463. Now this time we are performing the addition of 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 that is 3000. Basically whatever we had subtracted we are now adding it up and the result of this addition will give us the value 1537. See? we restored the value back. And with this, we are also restoring the value of Q3 back to 1. This means the value of Q3 is going to be 1. Now let's determine the value of Q2. So we are going to take this remainder that is 1537. Now this time we are going to subtract the divisor 3 multiplied with 10 squared which happens to be the place value of Q2. So basically, 1537 minus 300 will give us the value 1237, which will initialize the value of Q2 to 1, which implies the subtraction of 300 has been performed only once so far. Now coming to the next iteration, we are going to take this intermediate remainder that is 1237 and we are going to perform the subtraction once more which will give us 937 because 1237 minus 300 is 937. With this, the value of Q2 will be set to 2, indicating that the subtraction has been performed twice. Now observe, this is a positive value, so we can keep on performing the subtraction. Now this time, from 937, if we subtract 300, we are going to obtain 637. With this, the value of Q2 will be set to 3. Coming to the next iteration, if we subtract 300 from 637, we will obtain the value 337 which will set the value of Q2 to 4. Observe, it is still a positive value so we can still perform the subtraction. So 337 minus 300 will result in 37. With this, the value of Q2 will be set to 5. Now we already know this is the last possible positive number if we keep on subtracting 300. So we know the value of Q2 is supposed to be 5. But honestly, we are able to say this due to manual trial and error method. Now from a machine's perspective, it won't be able to do this. Therefore, it will keep on performing the subtraction until it obtains a negative intermediate remainder. Now if we perform this subtraction, we obtain minus 263 which sets our value of Q2 to 6. Observe, this is a negative intermediate remainder. So now the machine will restore it back to the previous positive value. 
So what we are going to do, we will take this negative remainder and we will perform the addition. So basically, whatever we subtracted, we are now adding. So minus 263 plus 300 will result in 37, which will restore the value of Q2 back to 5. And with this, the machine now can state the value of Q2 is 5. So this is the reason why it is called the restoring division procedure. Basically, in order to determine a particular digit, the machine will keep on performing the subtraction until it comes across a negative intermediate remainder. And once it comes across the negative intermediate remainder, the machine will then reset it back to the last intermediate positive remainder, resetting the value of that particular digit to that particular value, which resulted in the last positive intermediate remainder. Anyway, for the sake of completion, we will also determine Q1 and Q0 in the same procedure. So let's do that. Now, during our last iteration, we obtained the intermediate remainder 37. So we will take that now. Now we are trying to determine the value of Q1, aren't we? So from 37, we are going to subtract the value 3 into 10 raised to the power 1, where 3 is the divisor and 10 raised to the power 1 happens to be the place value of the digit Q1. So 37 minus 30 will give us the value 7. With this, the value of Q1 will be initialized to 1 which basically implies that the subtraction of 30 has been performed only once so far. Coming to the next iteration, we are going to take the intermediate remainder 7 and perform the subtraction of 30. So 7 minus 30 will result in minus 23, setting the value of Q1 to 2. Observe, this is a negative intermediate remainder, isn't it? So what we will do, we will take this, and add whatever we subtracted in the previous one. So, minus 23 plus 30 will give us the result 7, which will restore the value of Q1 back to 1. So, with this, the machine determines the value of Q1 is 1. Now, let's try to determine the value of Q0. Coming to our last iteration, we obtained the intermediate remainder 7. So, we are going to take that. Now, from 7, we are going to subtract 3 into 10 raised to the power 0, where 3 happens to be the divisor, and 10 raised to the power 0 is the place value of Q0. So, 7 minus 3 is going to give us the result 4. With this, the value of Q0 will be initialized to 1. Since it is a positive intermediate remainder, let's perform the subtraction once more. So, 4 minus 3 will result in 1, setting the value of Q0 to 2. Now coming to the next iteration, we will take the last remainder that is 1 and perform the same subtraction. Now this time 1 minus 3 will result in minus 2, setting the value of Q0 to 3. However, observe, it is a negative remainder. So, we are going to reset it by taking the negative remainder 2 and adding whatever we subtracted in the previous iteration. So, minus 2 plus 3 will give us the result 1 which will restore the value of Q0 back to 2. And with this, the machine determines the value of Q0 to be 2. And finally, this is going to be our last remainder or final remainder that is 1. So this is how the machine is going to perform the division in restoring division procedure. So in this session, we obtain the understanding of restoring division procedure. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to observe the implementation of restoring division procedure. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.